Cal Poly chemistry professor was awarded a $300,000 grant. A Cal Poly chemi... And students can go back to hiking thanks to official reopening of the Cal Poly P. Broadcasting from Studio 300 on Cal Poly's campus, you're watching Mustang News. Hello, welcome to Mustang News. My name is Daniel Park. And I'm Allison Royal. Mustang News starts now. Slow Safe Ride is making it easier to go downtown on a weekend night. David Klein has the latest on how it affects fraternities across Cal Poly. Downtown transportation to fraternity members on the weekend. Zeta Beta Tau Vice President Derek Leitz explains how the agreement will benefit Greek life across campus. One is a safer way for like people in IFC. Because you know. Slow Safe Ride has reached an agreement with IFC to provide downtown transportation to fraternity members on the weekend. Zeta Beta Tau Vice President Derek Leitz explains how the agreement will benefit Greek life across campus. One is a safer way for like people in IFC or in uh, Panhellenic to get downtown in a safe way, in a safe manner, and they get to travel in groups. So you have like the group aspect of that. Another cool addition with the slow safe ride pass includes cut rate prices for food and other services around town. You also get like discounts on certain food places like Sodoka, for example, or even you get um, like um, no cover chargers for bars and such that, so you get incentives to really like use the service. The deal was originally supposed to include Panhellenic, but multiple chapters organizations ruled against it, thus creating the plus one clause in the new agreement. For Mustang News, this is David Klein. Fraternity members will be required to pay $5 per quarter to be able to use the slow safe ride service. You can visit their website for more details. A Cal Poly professor received a $300,000 research grant to research nanotechnology and water desalination. The National Science Foundation granted chemistry professor Shang Zhu Zheng with enough money to further research in how nanotechnology can help desalinate water. When water is desalinated, all of the ions and impurities in salt water get separated so that it can be used as fresh water. The nanotechnology Cal Poly is using is called carbon nanotubes. The carbon nanotubes are much more efficient than other desalination technology because there is no friction, so water is able to flow freely through them. Professor Zhang says his motivation for this research comes from one of the main problems in California. Zhang says the grant money will be very useful for the research. The money will allow faculty to spend more time with the students during the research process, allow the students to get paid for their efforts, and increase the overall learn by doing experience. Students can enjoy a hike to the P once again. The Cal Poly P is reopening on Monday, January 25th. The P closed after erosion made it difficult for students and facilities to hike. The Poly P is one of the university's oldest traditions. It was started after a rivalry with San Luis Obispo High School in 1919. The high school put an H on the hill, and Poly students turned it into a P, guarding it and vowing to never let it happen again. Painting the P is a long-standing Cal Poly tradition. The University Union Advisory Board is overseeing the project. Semmel and Van Ronk, like many Mustangs, fondly remembers hiking up to the P to watch the sunset during her freshman year. And she's glad that now, this year's freshmen will have the same opportunity. It's been closed for a while now where the freshmen this year and some of the freshmen last year didn't get to see that. It just makes me really excited to know that I'm able to contribute to the next generation and they'll be able to enjoy it like I got to enjoy it. Construction included building trail markers, steps, and a new road for facilities to safely drive up to the P if needed. There will be a celebration on January 25th at 10 a.m. right outside of Spanos Lawn. All of campus is encouraged to come out. This Monday, all students are invited to the Hike the Pea party. Meet in front of Spanos Lawn. The event will feature a ribbon-cutting ceremony and refreshments will be provided. You can also take part in the Instagram contest. Be sure to wear your favorite Cal Poly Proud t-shirt. 
After the break, over 200 species of birds were spotted in a local town. Find out where next. Also after the break, we'll tell you more about a new cross-culture forum series. My new dad teaches me all kinds of stuff. Mm. Sure. He helps me with homework. That would be 3.6795. Thanks. Yep. He helps me with my decision making. I wouldn't use this one. Ever. And he's even teaching me how to drive. And that's why cars have bumpers. I'm learning so much. You don't have to be perfect to be a perfect parent. Thousands of kids in foster care will take you just as you are. My new mom and I have a lot in common. <sighs> the great outside. We both love the outdoors. So shiny. That's not a flower. We both love geology. Oh, look. An igneous one. That's not a rock. And she knows a lot about wildlife. <gasps> a labradoodle! <gasps> That's not a dog. Hanging out has been kind of fun. You don't have to be perfect to be a perfect parent. Thousands of kids in foster care will take you just as you are. This is the moment I knew his future had no boundaries. There are some moments only the forest can inspire. Find yours at discovertheforest.org. Here is an event that you could tweet about. People from all across California came together at the 20th annual Morro Bay Winter Bird Festival. All bird lovers from all over could participate in field trips and workshops with both national and local birding experts. Guest experts were able to give tips on how to better view birds. Morro Bay has been recognized as a top destination to view local and winter birds. We are bird crazy, so yeah. I don't know exactly if there's an explanation for why, it just kind of happened. We love nature and then it expanded into a love of birds. And this year there were over 200 species of birds spotted by visitors. Faculty members have a new outlet to host open forum style discussions thanks to the, the cross-cultural centers. The new series, the Cross-Cultural Faculty Symposium, features faculty members delivering presentations that touch on race, class, ability, sexuality, and other intersectional perspectives that are present on our campus. Stephen Brzezzi, a lecturer in the College of Liberal Arts, kicked off the series with his talk titled The Pornography of Fear. He discussed the progression of gay pornographic writing through the AIDS epidemic up until 1996. I want to show them that it's okay to talk about topics uh, at the university that seem out there or improper, um, and that it's more about the the kind of um, attitude and respect one brings to the material. The cross-cultural centers will continue the series by bringing in more faculty members throughout the school year. A group of students is planning a game of Wizards on campus. Our reporter Giovanni Jimenez Garcia talked to these students. This is what a game of Quidditch looks like. Like, it's utter chaos and death. And they try to kill each other. So it's pretty entertaining. This is not your typical sport. This is Cal Poly's Quidditch Club. The game is based on a sport with the same name from the Harry Potter series. Although the fictional game involves flying broomsticks, players run around the sports pitch on regular brooms. Well, we do have brooms, except our brooms can be a bit more uh, uh, colorful and creative than just your standard Firebolt or, or Nimbus 2000. Um, we don't really fly, uh, although sometimes we do get some hang time. The club follows the rules of the International Quidditch Association, which governs the way the sport is played. Ward says that although the sport may look silly, it requires a lot of physical energy. 
I think it looks more athletic than people expect it to. I remember seeing games when you when you see people really seriously playing. I mean, you recognize that it is a sport. I mean, they're working their butts off. So I'm using the club was approved at the end of fall quarter, but have only recently begun to advertise to more students. Ward and Mueller started the club because they wanted to share their passion for the sport with other students. It's a great club. It's gender inclusive. It's fun. It's just a neat way to exercise, and I think that a lot of people really enjoy it, and I wanted other people to experience the sense of community that I had gotten from the team. Why don't you guys... Giovanni Jimenez Garcia, Mustang News. The club practices every Saturday starting at noontime on the North Mountain Fields. All students are welcome to join. Restaurant Month has once again arrived in San Luis Obispo County, and now's the time for some great deals at local restaurants. More than 40 restaurants are participating in the event, and just for this month, they are offering special menu options. Some of the eateries have a three-course meal ranging from $30 to $40. Restaurants like Slow Provision has three courses for two people for $30, which includes a salad, entree, and dessert. Restaurant Month is a great time for people to experiment with new places and try out local foods and craft beers. The deals will last until the end of this month on January 29th. In California, protesters shut down the Bay Bridge in San Francisco on Martin Luther King Jr. Day. The protesters blocked traffic just as into the late afternoon rush hour commute began, and traffic was backed up for miles. The protesters led two groups, Black Seed and the Black Queer Liberation Collected collective stated that they were protesting recent police shootings in the area. In order to stop the traffic, these demonstrators chained cars together and others sat down on the busy highway. The California Highway Patrol was able to clear out lanes after about 90 minutes. The CHP has confirmed that 25 people were arrested. Cal Poly students will hold a celebration of life for students Aaron Wolf, who was killed last weekend by an Amtrak train. The event will take place this Monday in the University Union, room 220 at 5 p.m. For more information, contact the Dean's Office at Dean of Students at calpoly.edu. Coming up after the break, we have your five-minute forecast. And five-day forecast. New marijuana regulations are expected to take effect thanks to a package of bills Governor Jerry Brown signed. Find out how it may affect our local county after the break. We're here. Yay. It's a short drive from your neighborhood to your naturehood. To find a neighborhood park or green space near you, visit Discover the Forest. Hey, um, this job looks perfect. Uh, it says you need people skills. Check. Uh, driver's license. Check. And a high school diploma. You've got one of those, right? Skip the drama. Get your diploma. I got that. You are good to go. Take that first step towards a better future. Find free adult education classes at finishyourdiploma.org. Today. I will not make headlines by going through a bad girl phase where I get that bad girl haircut where they shave just one side of your head. And I will hey, not bring a Komodo dragon as my plus one to an award show, even though that would be awesome. I'm Olivia Munn, and I will not be trending today because there's a much bigger story that needs to be heard. Hi. May I please have an application? Thank you. Skip the drama. Get your diploma. Okay. Take that first step towards a better future. Find free adult education classes at finishyourdiploma.org. A new train could be coming to town. The Phillips 66 refinery in Santa Maria is moving forward with its plan to bring mile-long trains carrying millions of gallons of oil through San Luis Obispo five times a week for the next 20 years. Workers would ship the oil from Canada, refine it in Santa Maria, then transport it through slow and up the California coast. Phillips 66 says the project will create about 30 to 50 temporary jobs during construction. 
However, protesters are concerned about the environmental and health impacts. Phillips 66 denied our request for an interview and said the company is not ready to speak with the press at this time. The Planning Commission hearings will be on February 4th and 5th at the San Luis Obispo County Government Center on Monterey Street. Doors open at 8 a.m. on both days. Just yesterday, Atascadera joins Paso Robles, Arroyo Grande, and Pismo Beach on the list of cities in San Luis Obispo County who want to ban the use of marijuana. Reporter Chloe Carson has more on the story. Brown signed a package of bills aimed at regulating the state's cannabis industry. Just yesterday, Atascadera joins Paso Robles, Arroyo Grande, and Pismo Beach on the list of cities in San Luis Obispo County who want to ban the use of marijuana. Student Bobby Cronk stands with Atascadera in banning the cultivation of marijuana. Um, if you do make it legal and regulate it, I would put a high tax on it and I would not allow people to grow it for their own purpose because there's no way you can regulate on how, to, how they're selling it and any taxes or anything because they'll put it under the, um, on the table. Grover Beach and Morro Bay made exceptions to patients and caregivers who grow medical pot for personal use. Amir Bradley said he believes it's simple to access a medical card as long as you claim to have the right symptoms. You know, apply for a card. If you have medical, you know, situations such as glaucoma or cataracts, stuff like that, pain. And currently, California is the nation's most populous state and largest medical marijuana producer. That is according to a study done by the Associated Press. California's new medical marijuana law took effect January 1, 2016. The law states that cities and counties that do not have ordinances on the books by March 1, 2016 will be subject to the state law only. This has put a time restraint on cities in San Luis Obispo County to rush and create regulations to put into place. Student Asia Love suggests how we should implement marijuana in San Luis Obispo. At a certain age, you are free to make those decisions just like you are at 21 to drink. And so I think it should be left into the hands of the people that are using it. But at the same time, obviously, if you're in high school, if you're a child, it shouldn't be open for you. So there should be some type of age cap, maybe 18. Currently, the cultivation of marijuana is illegal in the San Luis Obispo city zones. In March of 2015, the city council implemented a law that bans offensive smells which are linked to recreational marijuana. For more information on the use of marijuana in San Luis Obispo County, feel free to contact your local city council member. Chloe Carlson, Mustang News. And as always, marijuana is not allowed on college campus. Cal Poly is hosting a talk on enhancement technologies and disabilities. Virginia Tech philosophy professor Ashley Shu will be presenting We Can Rebuild You, Disabled Bodies and Technological Imagination. The talk will highlight bionic technologies and how they will be altering many lives in the future as well as many real life experiences. Prosthetic technologies for limb amputees, social pressure to walk and pop culture and media coverage of Paralympians will also be some of the topics discussed. This event is free, open to the public, and will take place in the Phillips Hall in the Performing Arts Center on Friday, January 22nd at 11 a.m. And now here we have Aiden with our weather. How's it going to look? Thanks, Allison. So as you can see, uh, at the start of the five-day forecast, it's going to be a bit windy with a high of 68. And it'll be slowly clearing up after a bit of rain on Friday. And then we'll get over to Monday with a high of 63. And it will be clear skies. Uh, looking at our beaches, if you were planning on going to enjoy the sand or the water, make sure you bring a sweater because it's not going to be too hot. Uh, just a high of 66 in Pismo Beach, 65 Cayucas, 63 in Morro Bay, and 65 in Oceano. Uh, looking in North County now, uh, a little bit warmer, but not too much. San Luis Obispo, high of 67, all the way up to Paso Robles, 68. So mid to high 60s there. Down in the South County, uh, we have a high in Santa Marina of 70, so that's a bit warmer than it's been. Uh, Royal Grande, Guadalupe, Orchid, and Vandenberg, all in the mid to high 60s. Back to you. All right, thank you very much, Aiden. Awesome. Women on campus have an opportunity to play basketball now that a new club has made its way to the Cal Poly campus. Stay tuned, and we'll introduce you to the team next. So who's going to do what? I'll pack the dead batteries. Great. I'll only put what I don't need into a duffel bag. Perfect. That's totally unhelpful. No problem. Meanwhile, I will try to comfort everyone by speaking in a calm voice. And who is going to handle supplies? I can forget to do a list for us. Thanks, pal. We couldn't be any less prepared. I'm proud of you guys. Talk to your kids about who to call, where to meet, what to pack. Visit ready.gov slash kids for tips and information. This is why you took the second job. While you taught yourself how to fix the plumbing. 
while you'll do whatever it takes to keep your home. And that is why we want to help. We are making home affordable, a free government resource that can make paying the mortgage easier. Call 888-995-HOPE today. Hey, um, this job looks perfect. Uh, it says you need people skills? Check. Uh, driver's license? Check. And a high school diploma? You've got one of those, right? Skip the drama. Get your diploma. I got that. You are good to go. Take that first step towards a better future. Find free adult education classes at finishyourdiploma.org. It's a short drive from your neighborhood to your naturehood. To find a neighborhood park or green space near you, visit discovertheforest.org. A new club sports team is now on campus for the first time in the school's existence. Mustang News reporter Aiden Matthews has the story. Team for a long time. Luckily, one student is making the effort toward changing that fact. I was assuming that Cal Poly would have a club team or whatever school I ended up going to would have a club team because that gives you the opportunity to still play competitively and still have a team. Um, but then when I came to Cal Poly, I realized that they didn't have a club team and so that was pretty disappointing for me. Ashley Spink is a second year biomedical engineer at Cal Poly and is the student that brought the team together. She says she was impressed with the enthusiasm by Cal Poly women to sign up for the team. I always assumed there was one because I knew there was a men's club team. Um, and then I was kind of disappointed when there wasn't. And then when I heard that Ashley was starting this, um, I was really excited and wanted to join right away. Olivia Brown is a second year liberal studies student and a member of the team. She feels the creation of a women's club team is an important addition to Cal Poly students. Um, it's just nice because there's more options now and I think it's a appealing factor because I feel like a lot of Cal Poly students um, when they come in they have played a sport before and it's just like having more options um, on campus for girls to play sports especially um, basketball. We're a really small team um, you can kind of assume that because most like really tall girls end up playing in college um, so there's a lot of girls that are like my height or shorter um, so we're really fast, which is good. We're a very athletic team. Spink says the team is in the process of learning plays and defensive sets in preparation for future competition against other schools. Aiden Matthews, Mustang News. The women's club basketball team does not have a finalized scheduled game, but they do plan on entering tournaments in the upcoming season. Three Cal Poly Mustangs heard their names called the 2016 MLS Super Draft. Chase Mincer made history as being the highest drafted player in Cal Poly men's soccer history, being taken 21st overall with the Columbus Crew. Then with a 49th overall pick in the draft, San Jose uh, drafted Kip Colby. And lastly, three-time All-Big West goalkeeper Wade Hamilton was selected 61st overall by the reigning MLS champions, the Portland Timbers. We wish those Mustangs great success on the road to becoming professional footballers. The Rams are coming back to Los Angeles, and I spoke with a Cal Poly Rams fan about their move back to the City of Angels. Barry has spread the left this time. United's to pass. Looking for Barry on a look in. He can't get it as he's tackled immediately by Woodson. And that was a fine defensive play by Abe that time. The St. Louis Rams are coming back to L.A. And Rams fans at Cal Poly are happy to say the least. Fourth year recreation parks and tourism administration student Cody Colzer explains his emotions with his favorite team coming home. Well, I am ecstatic that the Rams are coming back to L.A. I grew up a Rams fan. My dad was an L.A. sports fan, so that's why he was a Rams fan. And then when I was born, I just immediately adopted the Rams. The Rams will begin playing in L.A.'s Coliseum in 2016. Their multi-billion dollar stadium in Inglewood will be completed and ready for operation by the beginning of the 2019 season. I think it's going to be great for the city of Inglewood as like a sport management kind of city recreation planning a student. I think it's going to bring a ton of jobs to the city. It's going to be amazing for them. For Mustang News, this is David Klein. The Rams have already begun talking, taking deposits for the 2016 season tickets. You can visit their website for more information on how to purchase. That's all for sports, guys. Back to you. All right. Thanks so much, David. Thanks, David. Coming up. Let's see where the cat in the hat's coming. Yeah, it's going to be exciting. We'll be right back.
It's a short ride from your neighborhood to your naturehood. To find a neighborhood park or green space near you, visit discovertheforest.org. So who's going to do what? I'll pack the dead batteries. Great. I'll only put what I don't need into a duffel bag. Perfect. That's totally unhelpful. No problem. Meanwhile, I will try to comfort everyone by speaking in a calm voice. And who is going to handle supplies? I can forget to do a list for us. Thanks, pal. We couldn't be any less prepared. I'm proud of you guys. Talk to your kids about who to call, where to meet, what to pack. Visit ready.gov slash kids for tips and information. This is why you took a second job. While you taught yourself how to fix the plumbing. While you'll do whatever it takes to keep your home. And that is why we want to help. We are making home affordable, a free government resource that can make paying the mortgage easier. Call 888-995-HOPE today. Hi. May I please have an application? Thank you. Skip the drama. Get your diploma. Okay. Take that first step towards a better future. Find free adult education classes at finishyourdiploma.org. This Sunday at 3 p.m., a production of Cat in the Hat will be performed on campus. The show is at the Christopher Cohen Center, located in the Performing Arts Pavilion. Tickets and more information are available at calpolyarts.org. Ah, uh, Daniel, so do you like to sing? Yes, I do. I love singing in the shower. Shake it off in the shower seems somewhat appropriate. Oh, what are the times? I'm pretty good at Adele. I don't know about you, but people think we're twins. Hello. Oh, <laughs> all right. Well, did you know Cal Poly's acapella groups, Take It Slow and That's the Key, are both performing this weekend? No, I did not. Yeah, they're wow. both getting on the road, going to Napa and L.A. Good luck to them, I guess. I know, a lot of traffic. <laughs> That's all we have for this week's edition of Mustangs News. Thank you for watching. I'm Daniel Park. And I'm Allison Royal. You can always go to mustangnews.net for continuous news updates. Have a great week.